Cyclone Freddy becoming more dangerous again on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for March 8th. Well, Freddy's gone and pulled another intensification streak and is now back to Category 3 on the Saffir Simpson scale off the western coast of Madagascar, gradually moving further out over the Mozambique Channel. The storm that will seemingly never die into its 30th day as uh, since the day that it formed, uh, minus of the two or three that it spent uh, as a remnant low over Africa. 85 days until Atlantic hurricane season and no areas of interest to speak of there, so that's some good news. Although the uh, high latitude is looking quite interesting right now, lots of stuff moving along there. And in the Australian region, we've still got that area of interest, 97p which is along the coast of Queensland, the Gulf of Carpentaria. It's actually slightly inland now. 10% on that one. 10% still on the one that's not far from Rodrigues in the Masserine Island chain. You can see it there. Not much going on with that. Likely to move northwestwards slightly. And Freddy, of course, really strengthening once again. And I now, once again, apparent. Category 3 status. Uh, could there be more strengthening? Odds against right now, but who knows? And in the South Pacific... Uh, Kevin's still going as an extratropical cyclone and we've got another 10% system there that could develop south of American Samoa in the coming week and head towards Niue and the Cook Islands. Let's take a look at satellite imagery across the world and look out for any of those red zones that show uh, areas that have had a lot of precipitation there, high rain rates, a lot of it over Australia. Freddy mostly over the water areas and in fact not much at all in the early part of that uh, loop but quite a bit more later on. Here's some satellite imagery showing uh, Freddy's uh, progress in the last 12 hours or so. Gradual movement northwestwards, it's still going quite slowly, roughly 6 miles per hour or so and it's eventually going to make a beeline for the coast of Mozambique near Kelimane. Here is the imagery from the Force 13 website, a brand new satellite imagery pages there available for viewing, force13.com slash satellite, and you can see how it's been progressing there as well. A one hour imagery here from the Teosat satellite, and the eye has been in and out there with lots of convection blowing up around it well into the minus 70s, uh, one or two little spots of minus 80s around it as well. Uh, it's just struggling to hold on to that red area on the northern side and I know that one or two have been suggesting that we're about to see an eye wall replacement cycle, could well be the case looking at that imagery there. And here is uh, a look here at the invest over Australia, you can see it's right along the border between the Northern Territory and Queensland moving inland, very sparsely populated area over here of course uh, in northern Australia but it is going to be dumping a lot of rainfall over that area up to 250 millimeters more expected. Sea surface temperatures across the globe look like this 78 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit across the eastern Pacific that's 26 Celsius 27 in the far eastern part of the Pacific and it's the Atlantic the Caribbean region 26 uh, struggling really to get to that hurricane threshold but of course it is still only March. The North Indian Ocean, the Arabian Sea, looking okay, especially further east near India, uh, 28 degrees. Same too for the Bay of Bengal, especially further east as well in the tropical zone, 28 the max. In the Mozambique Channel, temperatures are a little bit lower, 27, maybe only 26 in a few spots, but it was certainly enough for Cyclone Freddy. Quite a small, uh, compact center to it, certainly helped it along. Uh, but really warm temperatures on the other side of Madagascar, in case we do get any more systems, 29 degrees easily there, and a few spots even further out to sea as well. Coast of Australia, very warm, 29 degrees plus. Further out, a little bit cooler, but still very warm temperatures across the board in the Australian region. Gulf of Carpentaria is probably the coolest, actually, at around 26 to 27. That's unusual. Coral Sea, 26 to 28 there. And around Fiji, temperatures looking good as well, especially on the northern side. Look east of there, near Samoa. You can see where those systems might form, uh, getting up towards 29 Celsius there as well. 
Uh, Mozambique Channel is below average right now, and the South China Sea is well below average there. Northern coast of Australia also lagging a little bit. Elsewhere, it's above average, most notably to the south and east of Fiji and Samoa, where we could be looking at a storm or two forming when we check the models in a moment. Western Pacific in the main development region, above average, and the Atlantic, just in case you're wondering about how it's going over there, quite a bit above average, and a potential El Nino building in the Pacific. Oceanic heat content looking good here across the South Pacific. Coral Sea building in there as well. Turquoises and above are pretty good for tropical cyclone development. Lots of energy stored there in the water. To the southwest of Guam as well, towards uh, the Micronesian Islands, a little pool of orange there as well. And the Eastern Pacific is already starting up. GFS computer model for the next five days shows the storm looking decent there, actually weakens it a little bit there uh, and then it struggles actually, it increases in size and it does make landfall not far from hurricane equivalent strength uh, but you can quite clearly see that the initialization of this is a little bit too low, we're probably looking at a low end uh, hurricane equivalent landfall by the time it gets to Mozambique and they're the, depicting landfall there on the 11th of March I think that's Saturday near Kelimani in Mozambique in the South Pacific, look out for one or two new systems the GFS are throwing out, uh, potentially two of them actually, one very short lived one to the west and a longer lived one further east, you can see it continuing on there and maybe another one spinning up to its east later on in that run, quite a, a high latitude so it will struggle but the middle system looks like it's going to get it's the most joy as it continues towards the southeastern region there, uh, towards the Cook Islands and uh, French Polynesia. I think it's going to be passing south of those islands though. Rainfall accumulations from Cyclone Freddy, uh, not a pretty picture at the moment. We are expecting very high amounts of rainfall now and it is still trending upwards for the coast of Mozambique and maybe a little bit inland. We're now expecting no less than 31 inches of rainfall that is uh, getting close to 800 millimeters uh, from this storm on top of what's already happened from the storm so far when it made its first pass through. Uh, the region uh, and that will extend 12 inches of rain all the way into southern Malawi there and uh, elevated amounts of rainfall extending into Zimbabwe and Zambia. Madagascar is still going to get a little bit more, 4 inches there, 100 millimeters, uh, but certainly a massive area of over 7 million inside uh, chances of 10 inches or more, 250 millimeters. So it is going to be a very widespread big flood threat, dangerous stuff there. And unfortunately, Freddy re-emerges according to the latest GFS forecast. It's still very low confidence, but the GFS wants it to spin right back out again through the Mozambique Channel and now a little bit towards the southwest actually, not far from the coast of South Africa, but it does pull away towards the end. And this once again is just another chapter on how incredible this storm is given that we are entering the 30th day of its existence, of course subtracting the three days that it spent inland over Mozambique the first time, we'll get onto that again in a moment. And there's the uh, systems once again there in the South Pacific and a third system forming behind it and then two more further to the west as well, one near Fiji, one near Vanuatu, very short lived near Vanuatu, getting pretty strong that one that forms near Fiji as it gets on towards Tonga towards the end of that 10 day period. A lot going on in this sequence here, five different storms showing themselves off there. I don't think we'll get all five, but clearly good conditions for storm development. That's all the serious stuff done with. Scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store. All of our usual items, as well as our still waiting for Hone t-shirt, which is gathering dust, still waiting for Hone, as well as full season individual storm animations by request. Well, in the silly range, Freddy continues. It moves southwards, gets a little bit more strength southeastwards, maybe a little bit more of a jog eastwards. And then at this point, it uh, runs back southwards and then eastwards and then who knows where else. Um, and then it's right on the threshold of turning post-tropical. I think it does. And then it just hooks right back towards the northeast a little bit. So who knows whether it will enter back into the region. But I imagine not that it would end up turning more towards the southeast. God, let's hope so. Freddy will, of course, break all records for longevity if that occurs as well as in accumulated cyclone energy, which is likely to happen much sooner than that. 
South Pacific, what happens to that cyclone? Quite uh, an impressive one actually, getting up towards possibly category three status there, brushing past Tonga and continuing southeastwards, no other land areas impacted. And then yet another cyclone actually forming there towards the end of that loop, round about the 21st, 22nd of March. So potentially we're in for six tropical cyclones in the South Pacific in that period. That really would be a turn up for the books, considering how quiet this basin has been of late. Of course, we have seen uh, a roar or two from a few cyclones already this season. You can talk about that and anything else on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather, general weather and other science chat uh, of all persuasions. Well, on this day was not a misprint, this actually happened. A historic, in a way, hurricane that occurred in the Atlantic Ocean through the West Indies, particularly affecting St Kitts, on March the 8th, 1908. Very long time ago, you might wonder whether they got it wrong or not, but by all accounts, it does appear as though this was an actual hurricane. Category 2 intensity, I think it was 100 miles per hour, and moved from northeast to southwest through the islands at a very improbable angle. Uh, but yeah, that did happen, and one of very few March storms, and I think it is only the, the only March hurricane. A massive anomaly, that one. Well, back to this year, I don't think we'll be seeing that in a hurry. Arlene is the first name in the Atlantic though, just in case. Adrian in the Eastern Pacific and Hone, of course, in the Central Pacific. We are code orange for Freddy, so it is possible that we will have live coverage starting on the storm tomorrow. In the Western Pacific though, the next name is Sanvu, and in the North Indian Ocean, it is Mocha. 11 storms so far this year, 92 is the average, and last year we saw 93. In the Southern Hemisphere, next up in the Australian region is Herman, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Fabienne, or Fabienne, and in the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.